I'm going to work through portions of this perspective packet with you. Using the angles that you can see on the photograph, draw lines past where you think you need to and look for where they intersect. Following all these different angles will help you to locate the vanishing point. Do the same thing here. Find angles in the photograph and use your ruler to draw lines where they intersect. When enough lines have been drawn, you'll be able to find the vanishing point, that point where all the angles recede to. You can draw a horizontal line along that point and that will show you the horizon line. So in dealing with one point perspective, you'll be drawing the orthogonal lines that you see labeled in this example box. In addition to those lines on the worksheet, you should draw every box as if it were made of glass or as if you could see through it. These are the lines I'm drawing now and they'll help you understand the structure of the box beyond just what you can see on those front three sides. Here I am erasing the lines that aren't needed to illustrate the box. The vanishing point is quite large. You want to have a much more precise point to connect all of your orthogonal lines to. So I'm making every effort to have these lines intersect at the same exact point, not that big snowball. Here I am deciding how deep the box should be. Once one of these vertical lines is drawn, you can connect with horizontals and verticals to finish the box. See, there it is. Now, this is a tricky box because it doesn't show you any sides, only the front. Everything is happening internally, or if the box was solid, you wouldn't be able to see any of the lines I was drawing. Here's another box. This time we can see the left side of it instead of the right side. Still using every corner of the box to find a point that needs to connect back to the vanishing point. Deciding how deep the box will be, connecting the back sides of the box with horizontal lines and vertical lines. And there you have it. You just need to erase your extra lines. Follow the same procedures here. Look for corners or points around the letter L. Draw them all back to the vanishing point and then determine how deep you want the letter to be. After that, you'll be able to recreate the L at the depth that you want, showing the back side of the box. letters in one point perspective. The letter A is a little tricky because it has all these angles in it, but I'll still start the same way, looking for everywhere there's a corner or a point and connecting those lines back to the vanishing point. The dotted lines are to represent lines you wouldn't be able to see if the A was solid. Now I'm showing how deep I want the box to go. You can see me drawing even the edges and the back side of the letter that you wouldn't be able to see if it were solid. Here's a good example of how to match the angles.
This is going to be kind of a tricky one because now we have curves. I'm adding some extra points to give me guidelines for where the lines will change from straight to curved when I draw the back side of the box. Now, when I need to find the edge of the curve, I can slide the ruler up like this. The first point that the ruler touches is going to be the outer edge of the U. You can see that point. That's helping me find where to start the curve on the back side of the U. I'm using all these little guidelines to help me trace the best shape possible. Now the outside of the U. Those guidelines can still help me. I'm using all these little trace points to help me locate where I think the edge of the U should be. Realistically, I probably need the left side of the U a little bit thin, so I'll go back and fix it in a minute. I'm erasing all the extra lines so you can see the letter a little more clearly. Here I am trying to make that side of the U just a little bit wider. This box is unique in that it has a hole cut out of the middle. There's going to be a lot of lines here, so try to keep straight what's going on. I'm doing those dotted lines so you can tell what should be hidden and what would actually be showing on the front side of the box. Now I'm tracing all of those corners of the hole that's cut out of the shape. You can see I left one line solid where you actually would be able to see into the hole. Uh, to see the edges of the inside. Now we're ready to find the back side of this opening hole. So pretend you're an ant and you're climbing up the top of the box, back down the back side, and meeting up with this corner of the box, or rather the trace line that came from the corner. That shows you how deep the box needs to be. Then you can trace a square or rectangle just like you always have. You're going to be enlarging this picture. I'm trying to find the vanishing point in the original photo and the horizon line so I can transition it to the larger photo. I'm going to first draw this picture frame. There's really no perspective acting on the picture frame because it's flat on the back wall. Now I'm moving on to the cabinet, which does have perspective. It's all going back to that one point. The lamp, is being drawn and I'm drawing a little rectangle to put the ellipse in to show 
uh, that I'm accurately creating an ellipse or a circle in space. The rug is also in perspective. The left corner of the rug actually happens off the edge of the page, so I've tried to recreate that in this drawing. Now moving into two-point perspective, we're doing this same thing where we look at a photograph and use the angles to sort of reverse engineer where the vanishing points would be. I'm tracing a lot of angles until I find the right point. Down here, it's a little bit easier. The front edge of the building is not in perspective. It's facing us, so we have to go with the left and right sides. Now we're drawing in two-point perspective, which means we have two vanishing points instead of one. And we're starting with the front corner of a box instead of the front side of a box. Again, I'm going to try to be as precise as possible with the vanishing points, making sure they meet at one tiny little point, not just anywhere in that big snowball. Now I'm deciding how deep each of the sides of the box should be, and remember to draw it as if it were see-through. So I'm drawing some of these lines that wouldn't actually be seen if the box were solid. I'm doing the same thing here, drawing all of the orthogonals back to the vanishing point, then deciding how deep the box should be. Next, I'm connecting those new lines, or the points connected to them, back to the vanishing point. Keep an eye out for the very last line I draw. It's going to show the back edge of the box, that line right there. A lot of people forget to draw that one. 